Hello there, my fellow Battle Brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapter's lore. Last week's vote was actually very close this time, with only a couple of the votes making the difference. Nevertheless, that means today's topic is another scion of Sanguinius, known as the Angel's Resplendent. However, this chapter has a rather unusual story, in that they pretty much metamorphosize into another chapter during their history. Don't forget to stay until the end and vote in another poll as well. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a few things about them, shall we? The Angels Resplendent was a relatively obscure successor chapter of the Blood Angels, created during an unknown founding. While many other chapters would fight for glory, faith, or the sheer joy of battle, the Angels Resplendent made nobility their creed. One of the very interesting aspects about them was that alone among the Scions of Sanguinius, their chapter was entirely free of the madness haunting the Blood Angel Legion curse. No space marine belonging to these guys ever succumbed to the Black Rage. At a certain point in the chapter's history, a strange individual known only as the Undying Martyr would arrive before the Angel's Resplendent. This Undying Martyr was a mortal who had survived an unusual feat of crossing the river Tristesse, which served as a moat for the Angel's Resplendent Fortress Monastery known as Canvolus. Very few full space marines could have mastered the crossing of the Tristesse. Thus, it was a mystery on how a mortal achieved this fate. Instead of ending the human's life though, the Undying Martyr was brought before Chaplain Icaros Malvoisen for interrogation. The Chaplain would then converse with the stranger for 19 days, before proclaiming him to be nothing less than a prophet of the God Emperor, who was bearing terrible new insights into the Imperial Creed. These new truths were dark indeed, for he revealed that humanity was corrupt beyond redemption, and that its greatest guardians, the Adeptus Astartes, were the worst of all sinners, for they had faltered and fragmented in the war against the Archdouchebag Horus. There could be no hope of ascension into the light of the Emperor, only penitence and pain for humanity's collective sins, both past and future. The war was already lost, and the only course was to fight in the knowledge of certain defeat. And thus began the great purge of the chapter of all the activities and items considered blasphemy, including many of the items once crafted by the warrior artisans of the chapter themselves. This great purge would sweep Canvolis clean of all beauty, leaving the fortress filthy instead, just as the words of the martyr had befouled the chapter itself. When traversing the corridors, one would trample through a mulch of rotting tapestry and pulverized statuary. The Undying Martyr had pronounced this effluvium of desecrated glories as sacrosanct, a mockery of treacherous pride. Things might have gone differently if the chapter master of the Angel's Resplendent, Varziva Cervantes, had actually been with the chapter during this harrowing time but the so-called Knight Resplendent had been absent for many standard years, campaigning with the chapter's own Elite First Company. There had been no word of them since the Great Purge, and eventually Chaplain Malvoisen declared them lost, although many in the chapter refused to believe it. They thought that the Knight Resplendent would return one day to reclaim and redeem the chapter. But in the absence of the chapter master, only Chief Librarian Athanasius and his own Librarian brothers had spurned the Testament of the Martyr. Inevitably, they would be denounced as heretics, and soon enough those loyal brothers following the will of the chaplains obediently stormed the Librarium, driven by a rather unusual hatred for their fellows, unmatched even in the battle against the Xenos. Athanasius and his followers had awaited their brother's assault, without weapons or armor but shielded by a contempt bringing the zealot's charge to a standstill. The attackers then waited for the frigid electric tang of a psychic assault, but then Athanasia spoke only one sentence, We will rise on burning wings. This assault was comprised only by words, but they were the chapter's code, delivered with a conviction that drained the poison from many of the attacking battle brothers. 
That might have actually been enough to stop the madness. But then Chaplain Icarus Malvoisen bellowed their new credo, the one revealed by the undying martyr. The Emperor condemns. The angels resplendent died that day, and the angels penitent rose in their place, shadow-bound and bitter. And this, my friends, is what happens when you leave the priest be in charge. The chapter is now ruled by a council of zealous chaplains called the Crown of Thorns. They are the judges of those brothers among them they consider to have sinned against the Emperor, which includes even minor offenses like creating scrimshaws honoring the Primarch Sanguinius, for they believe that art exalted the tyranny and the sin of vanity. Some within the chapter still harbor distrust for the new order, clinging to the chapter's old identity, believing that once they had been warrior artisans, before they were enslaved by an outsider. They know in their hearts that their true skills lie in the arms and art in harmony, the true path of the resplendent. But to voice such an unpopular opinion is considered a sin in the eyes of the crown of thorns. Another worrying symptom of this new order is that the battle brothers of the chapter are now prone to falling victim to the genetic curse known as the Black Rage. Prior to the arrival of the Undying Martyr, the chapter had never had one Astartes fall victim to the dread flaw of the Sons of Sanguinius. But now it appears that the curse is flowing freely enough to warrant the chapter raising a deaf company of its own. In the past, the Angels Resplendent believed that they were a chapter of warrior artisans, a band of dedicated servants of the Emperor who understood that war was an art form in and of itself. In the pursuit of art, the Angels Resplendent believed they had developed a discipline and an understanding of the broader needs of humanity that reinforced their commitment to the defense of mankind. Following the arrival of the Undying Martyr on the steps of their fortress monastery, they had been seized by a new devotion to a puritanical variant of the Imperial Creed, which holds that mankind and the Adeptus Astartes are so corrupt as they are no longer redeemable in the eyes of the Emperor. And, as such, the only choice for mortals and Astartes alike is to receive unending punishment for their failures in the God Emperor's eyes. All sins must be severely punished, in particular the sin of vanity, of which art is only one expression. They have become a bitter, humorless band of zealots, fired only by hatred for sin and the desire to castigate the sinner. But maybe we can better understand their new doctrine with a direct quote from the Testament of Thorns. Beauty blinds the beholder, bedazzling the eye with grace and splendor, and beguiling the heart with the promise of hope. The first rapture is an illusion, the second a lie, both wrought by the archenemy to bind the soul in sweet tangles while the world sours, bleeds, and burns unopposed. Those who cherish beauty flirt with corruption, but those who fabricate, disseminate, and embody its deceits are among the foremost of heretics. A couple of notable members of the chapter include the Knight Resplendent, Varzival Cervantes. This guy was the last known chapter master of the Angels Resplendent, who had been absent for many years even before the arrival of the Undying Martyr, supposedly campaigning with the chapter's elite first company. There had been no word of him since the Great Purge, and Chaplain Malvoisin declared him lost, although some in the chapter still refuse to believe it even to this day. Relion is another reclusiarch of the Angel's Penitent. He was among the chapter's forces sent to aid the Blood Angels defend their homeworld of Baal from an invasion by High Fleet Leviathan. While on Baal, this reclusiarch nearly struck Mephiston when he was unnaturally cured of the Black Rage, but relented and instead wished that the Chief Librarian receive Sanguinius's mercy via an honorable death. Although the High Fleet Leviathan was eventually defeated, it is not known if Relian had survived the campaign. As the Angels Resplendent, the chapter wore golden power armor trimmed in silver and red. The company number was determined by a low gothic numeral inscribed on the right knee plate. Their chapter badge was a hooded, angelic figure with its arms raised. As the Angel's Penitent, their power armor is black, with streaks of umber. 
the Imperial Aquila or Imperialis on the chest is gold. The angel's penitent chapter badge is a large white skull with a grey crown of thorns upon its brow. This is centered upon a field of black with umber streaks. For today's poll, you can vote on another Space Marine chapter to be covered soon. Option A is the Star Phantoms, Option B is the Brazen Minotaurs, not to be confused with the Minotaurs, and Option C, once again, the Excoriators. To vote, simply write down your choice in the comments below. Thank you for participating. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Angels Resplendent and the Angels Penitent for today. Definitely proof that some Space Marines should be a bit less gullible. Also, don't leave the damn priest in charge anymore, kids. Or you might return from Crusade one day and you would not like what you find. Were you aware of this strange chapter before? Are they among your favorites? What do you like or dislike most about them? Do share any thoughts, opinions or questions in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and found it informative, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. I thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you an awesome and healthy day. The Emperor protects.